Good morning and thank you very much for inviting me. Everyone kids at me and the fact of me being an archaeologist, but that's true, I just can't help it. And I sometimes asked uh, how come an archaeologist ended up in such a thing. Uh, well, it was the most likely thing to do because that was the most unlikely to end up as an archaeologist. My uh, fellow students, for instance, ended up in different uh, job uh, placements. Well, I was here to talk about the digital challenge, which is something that probably should be a bit tiresome for how long we have been talking about the digital challenge. Is it 20, 25 years? It's no longer the digital challenge. We are now talking about the digital transformation, yet there is like a this ongoing trend on how we are being told that things will change because of the digital thing and so on. But let me tell you why this is the time for digital change, just like it was some five or ten years ago. But yet, despite this, things are changing indeed now. And I would also like to provide some food for thought on what we could do, on wh how we could manage this. It's always been told that the teachers, the people in education need to do things and they are forced to change also because of this digital challenge. And first, uh, you, as obvious as it may seem, everything changes, not just our work. So the challenge ahead in understanding what the digital challenge is and how to tackle it is a shared challenge among different activities and industries. In the automotive industry, for instance, if you have walked around the Mobile World Congress, you will see cars everywhere. People are claiming that mobility will be deeply transformed. And here you can see this guy on this car with his hands outside the window, believing that this will, the car will drive itself. It's not the Google picture, the, but here I wanted to have this be other than the usual Google one. And car companies know that they will no longer be probably in the car making industry, but in the service industry. Their goal not being selling you a car, but selling you mobility services. And if this is what you have to consider, probably the structure you had beforehand will no longer be useful in providing this service. So we're talking about big major companies being forced to reinvent themselves, which is something that's really tricky. On social and healthcare matters, there will be a profound transformation. So far these days, we had like five, six, maybe seven times a year when you got in touch with the healthcare system when in need for a blood test or when in need for a vaccination. And now we're talking about people having like 200 or 300 touch points per day. And instead of you saying, I don't feel well, I'll go and visit and make an appointment with a doctor, it will be the other way around. Doctor getting an appointment with you or phoning you to see how you were feeling like. So things will have to be fully reconsidered and can things cannot be taken for granted that they will continue as they used to be. And as much sci-fi as this may seem, yet things will go beyond. This is just a prototype, by the way, but you can see how things are shaping up here. Probably you will be able to look at these and picture your ECG. It's not just a sensor relaying data to someplace else, but rather any surface could be a touch screen, for instance. Everything is under the threat of being thoughtfully reconsidered, for instance, when it comes to security, when it comes to food and catering, when it comes to the automotive industry and healthcare. So we can all see the possibility of a given device coming in and changing the way we have been working so far. Nothing should be deemed as stable. So one of the main differences we are seeing now from five to ten years ago is that five, ten years ago people would claim education would change, but then they wouldn't think that everything would change. 
you were being told, like, what about computers in the classroom? What about the role of the teacher? You need to reconsider that because now the teacher is a coaching and accompanying a process and so on. Well, this profound disruption in the, your way of working and your way of facing your professional challenges is something that was in there before, but maybe it wasn't that much shared by people working in the financial industries or working in other industries. But now, in every place, in every arena, they all feel affected by this digital transformation, not just the educational environment. Without a doubt, we are moving into a spot where data, where algorithms are forcing us to reconsider things. And this is the setting. So no one's pointing at you mm, harder than they are pointing someone else. The futures are, uh, the, sorry, the discussions are on the future of jobs, the future of labor. It's no longer just the teacher. It's about the very cup drivers, about any job position. So all jobs must be reconsidered because of this digital impact. And people are going through these uncertain times. Some of them with excitement, some of them with fear. But then a general topic. So my proposal to you is to come up with a series of reflections on how to manage this uncertainty with a general outlook, not just specifically on education. So in order to contribute that this is indeed something general in mind, and later on Carlos Magro will specifically devote his presentation to the education. But let me tell you about what's the present situation, where we are now, why are we talking about the digital transformation? We are talking about digital transformation because the internet world has gone through several stages and as a kind of a historian trying to understand the timing of things, only three things happen, have happened so far in the internet and the latest one just started not long ago. Internet is but an informational flow and what has changed is people feeling into this flow. When it started back in 1995, the ones feeding into these were companies because creating the general content and making these available online was not that easy. So you needed some coding skills, you needed some uh, computational languages on your toolkit, you need to be able to have a modem device. So it was a bit of a nagging thing to do so that not everyone could do so, not just going online, but even less so trying to create content. So when the internet started, us browsing the internet, we're looking at proposals and content that were made by either companies or institutions. So you would see like the content of the Barcelona City Council or the Catalan Ministry of Education or the British Encyclopedia or the, the catalogue of a retail company. Hopefully by 2005, this flow was enlarged by a second contribution with the appearance of easy, user-friendly technologies so that without much need for skills, you could contribute anything to the online world. You would see the solution so that anyone could upload pictures, videos. Do you remember about blogs? There was a time when you were outdated if you had a blog. Now you're outdated if you have a blog. But anyway, all these platforms that would make it easy for you to have YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, it was created back in 2004, 2006, 7. Just by looking back into history, you will realize. And this was a profound transformation in the online world, turning, the, what, turning what it was a corporate environment into a more social environment for good or bad. Every time there was a new stage, the degree of idiocy was am amazing. And I must say, the amount of senselessness and, and numbness was uh, really amazing. 
Now you no longer find that many people criticizing or uh, saying their boss is an asshole on Facebook, probably because they're out of job. Anyway, so human nature in their ability to read changes. Now people that may think their boss is an asshole, they only say so in WhatsApp, as if that was much more restricted. But so we learn by working on this channel where you may have these personal uses. But then the third stage started where we have been working for a couple of years. You log in internet objects log in on the net to say things. There is a container tell, telling you that it's in the uh, in Amsterdam or a bus will be here in 10 minutes or the watch tells you you've taken only 400 instead of 500 steps. You have things, objects that all provide you with information over the net. Mind you, this is wonderful on the screen. Everything sending in five. Every fifth year, there is uh, one innovation. There are constant innovations in this uh, room. The pace, the latent pace, implies a deep change every tenth year. Every time we did something, let me say, we change the nature of information available at the time. There has been, uh, there has been a change in things in the first stage, mind you. Working interf interface was the web. This implies a big screen and uh, a PC, the, a desktop. It implies a reflexive uh, information consumption. As soon as I reach home, I sit down and I'll have a look at it. I'll switch on my desktop. You have a room for the PC at home, or you have something strange in a corner in your parlor. However, internet access, was I sit down to have a look at it. This is dead, the desktop's dead. There are only desktops in uh, jobs, job places. If you have at home a desktop, really you are a cheapskate. It's obsolete. It is an old pot. You are teachers, so you need the graphic design for that. It's been replaced by a new gadget. No longer a desktop itself, but a small screen, a PC. This implies that uh, we went from uh, reflexive to impulsive, frantic as the utilization. This implies that uh, information utilization is uh, zapping based. I used to switch on the PC to read something. Now, then. Two minutes later, I'm getting bored of that. The way it changes, the way to access data and to consume it, to consume them. Therefore, there is a change in your way to suggest utilizations and uh, convince us uh, to embrace these uh, dynamics. Let me proceed to the third inter interface. In the MWC, we do dwell on the fact that mobiles are dead, no matter how many new ones uh, pop up. Now, data traffic by communications operators to be marketed is not the flow of data on your mobile sets, but it's that on your objects. And the whole MWC, if you've not attended the Congress earlier, here everything dwells on 5G. Why? Because they want to connect the buses, uh, salon cars, streets, uh, as many gadgets as possible connected together. There is a sensor on your baggage telling that it's not lost, but somewhere in the airport. This ability to connect objects is what they are keen on, and hence, and therefore, will rethink everything. Let me sum up the net on one screen. Let me proceed. Let me. Uh, proceed to it. Information flows uh, changing input, first by companies, next by people, next by things, with a working interface that uh, changes. It used to be a big screen that boiled down to a mobile one. Now it's any surface eligible uh, to be fitted over with a sensor. In the first stage, when we switched on desktops, we usually we educationalists and any industry in the world optimize the processes. Now we digitalize up everything. We used to, to digitalize things. We uh, computerized uh, schedules, uh, uh, schoolroom distributions, uh, and uh, 
others uh, computerized, uh, for instance, uh, logistics, uh, warehouse management, uh, with connected desktops, uh, people rendered the process more efficient. Vis-a-vis -vis people, we start to manage conversations, community, social media. Let me manage my reputation. They talk about my teaching performance, my school drive, a PTA, WhatsApp uh, communities. And uh, we used to try to learn to manage processes to be more efficient and uh, to learn how to manage our conversations. Everything is difficult, everything is uh, taken for granted, but we had a go at it. Now, we hear the drums in the jungle telling that the challenge will be how efficient you are in data management. This is our new frontier. And very soon you'll get ideas about uh, related to the ideas I have uh, from uh, my resume and data in uh, data I have. Uh, we, I may orientate, I may counsel my student. This will come upon us. It's still very early. It is a 10-year stage where they start to fit. So let's be serious about it. This will happen. In four years' time, I either say that instead of being keen on uh, WhatsApp PTA groups, we'll be keen on algorithms deciding whether my uh, son uh, should uh, be on the humanistic or on the engineering track. If humanities still exist, of course, I'll champion that since I am an antiquarian myself. With new information flows, with new working interfaces changing, with new challenges for us to face in our job places in the community, uh, people also worry about uh, some things. Puch Nero dwelt on him being asked about OF deployment and OF access in 90s we did worry whether everyone would be would be able to access that. We used to talk about the digital divide. We used to worry about it. We still worry about it, but not so much as we used to 20 years ago. Because technology is uh, simplified and uh, the access by the majority is scaling up. Jobs are not fixed 100 percent, but uh, progress is uh, right. Now let's uh, manage the participation processes that uh, are a mess. It's not clear what's uh, good, uh, whether it is good that everyone uh, thinks himself able to input into it. This is a bad conversation because if you challenge the goodness about inputting into it, you look like a sort of uh, a politically or socially speaking a strange person. It's uh, hateful to challenge participation, but now we clearly make a poor use of participation. For instance, if you want to fight breast cancer, it should be a trending topic on Saturday afternoon. I don't know how efficient it is. When I used to be at college in Girona, I left uh, my classroom, there were people uh, collecting signatures uh, to fight against cancer. When we have 1.1 1. 1. 1 million signatures against cancer, cancer will disappear. Uh, instead of that, we should uh, foster research facilities, uh, uh, subscriptions. Now, uh, the current stage is a sort of uh, pub activism. Sometimes we have to take the streets in order to champion things. So let's talk about digital participation, which is not uh, 100% fixed as it happens with access. Uh, there's still a long way to go here. My second frontier we have to go through in a world teeming with data, is transparency, and the clarity. I mean, how much information I have, where I keep it, how you use it, with whom you share that. My child. was hyperactive, for instance. May I cancel it in your transcript instead of always uh, 
considering him hyperactive. May I cancel data? May I know which data you transfer uh, from my child uh, to school to school and transcript to transcript? How much will people worry about this information flow and transfer? School-related and, of, of, uh, and of any type. For instance, my uh, blood count telling me I'm cholesterol high. My insurance company didn't have a look at it. My car, I drive at 100 kilometers plus per hour in the speedway. I'm sure no one else knows about it. Will this complex up my policy? Shall I get a bill from the um, uh, traffic constabulary because uh, my car uh, blew the whistle? This is what we fear. This summarizes where we come from. Now we talk again about digital transformation. I'll tell you why. Because uh, it's a new wave coming upon us, the third one starting now. And everyone tries to serve it, to adjust to it. This won't conclude here. Many things will happen. I don't know what's going to happen, however. I do know one thing that uh, undoubtedly it will be 2025. No doubt about it in my mind. I've got a method for that. Perhaps uh, it showed before for you. It's 2025. That's the deadline. We are at the beginning of 2018, 2019, 20, 21, 23, 25. It's uh, eight years term. Let's get it right. Let's focus on that. Uh, start managing whatever the whatever the job you apply. The challenge for the next eight years is how I manage the information to deliver a better service. This is my challenge. It doesn't matter if you offer educational packages, you sell cars, you manage healthcare services, you are an official in the University of Barcelona. Everyone worries about managing private data for a better service to be delivered. And uh, we'll deal, deal with it for the next eight years. We are at the start of it. Many mistakes will be committed, but this is the way to go. My message boils down to some problems you have being the ones everyone will share, either in banking, in education, in schooling, in industry, manufacturing, a welder. Being, it doesn't matter if you weld for Panasonic, everyone shares the same concern. The current challenge is what to do when the world connects to things. When the classroom tells you that a boy, a schoolboy is missing, when the machine tells you you default on your homework, when the system tells you've not rendered your uh, composition, your essay, when the algorithm tells that uh, you are at, uh, you are running, you are taking the chance of uh, dropping off school, and uh, because of your poor performance, and uh, this is happening now. So what's DT, digital transformation? DT, against the background of constant progress implied by internet, we enter a new stage. We have to rethink everything. We reapproach which our goal is and how to make it with it, because it's a new scenario for us to play in it. Each one of these three stages on the screen of, net, of the net has got a different name. We, talked about internet, and next it's web 2.0, now it's uh, DT. I'm a humanities man. I have no doubt that when the name changes, this is so because we feel that something in the quintessence has changed as well. We are aware that uh, in the heart of the beast is new. We coined up a new name for that. It's not a fad. Uh, some people are very bad at uh, naming. They change the name because they feel something essential is uh, changing. I tell you, there has been a change in the nature of information, in the uh, working interface, in everything, together with a change of who cares about it, who manages that. When we talked about internet, uh, technologists, engineers dealt with it. The colleague who knew about computers you were working, for instance, in a bank, and that was dealt with by systems uh, unit. It was a web 2.0, so uh, it was dealt with uh, by communication and market, uh, marketing staff. What uh, should we do with Facebook and WhatsApp and our students? It is not uh, an informatics topic, but communication, social media we want to have, and which relations we want to have on it. And uh, it was some technical about it. We needed the different awareness uh, to understand it. Now it's been renamed because 
we outside have many people from other industries, every one of them believing that now the topic is no longer how I uh, sell or uh, push through my message. Now everything boils down to management. Outside, for instance, yesterday I, I met someone, the CEO of a bank, who three years ago told me, what should I do with Facebook? I have seen a Spanish, a Catalan version for it, a domestic version, a Catalan version, what I miss, what should I do with Facebook? Now he tells me, what should I do? Should I close my uh, subsidiaries? It is a different question. And uh, people ask, and those who have to de deal with it are not marketing stuff. It's not talking about what to do with WhatsApp groups, but talking whether an algorithm may anticipate things I should know. This is a deep question to answer that uh, registers with the nature of what we are up to, either uh, educating or selling automobiles. Let's reapproach it. I try to tell you that uh, your problems are the world's problems as well. Fortunately, they are yours and someone else's. Differently from other stages of this digital uh, trip and journey, you all, you all are in the same boat. Everyone worries about it. This is a paper. I needed to show something on, a, on the screen in English. This is an old paper by uh, MIT. It is a must. It is an MIT's paper in English uh, telling that uh, Organizations that uh, successfully carried out a DT are cool. As you know, there are papers for anything. Some say that uh, um, um, bluefish is good for cholesterol. Some others tell it is uh, bad. It says uh, it computer digitalized companies uh, succeed. It's on the screen for me to tell you how they say a, an organization is properly digitalized. According to them, it is so in as much as there are two access here. We consultants always make a matrix. So this matrix implies that uh, on the y-axis, from top to bottom, a judge told me about it. He told me, order, order, I call you to order. So it is the y-axis, and the horizontal one is the x-axis. The y-axis. Digital intensity in your processes. How much you've digitalized your operations. Your recording, your registration, your enrollment, your accountability, your staff management, your schedule. If you are an air carrier, the price and the allocation of fleets of craft how much you digitalize your processes and operations. Apply it to anything in your environments and your trades. I'm keen on the, on the x-axis. I mean, how digital your teams, your people are, your staffs. That's the issue. Staff, people, MIT people who are fluent in English, how they measure the right digitalization of uh, a team of people. They factor in four things. Four. First, the team shares the, an agreed coordinated vision of what's going on and, and where we head to. This is a very scarce uh, resource. I don't know in your trade, but it is very scarce everywhere in the planet. Don't take it for granted that the big bank, in a big bank, the board shares a coordinated, agreed approach to what's going on and what they should be up to. There are many opinions about it. The worst case is that of a board with different minds as to what's going on and where they should be heading to, whatever the trade is. The same applies to you. Next. Let's imagine the team shares an agreed vision of what's going on. Do they make decisions? Do they do things in this direction? Third, let's imagine they share an agreed vision and that, and that they do things. Someone pays attention to them. Does someone pay attention to them? In a big bank, 
one of the few left some years ago, we told them, this will make you laugh, but 10 years, uh, that's uh, the world we had. A big bank was told by us. In the, when subscribing a new customer, you have to jot down the, uh, the zip code and the, your telephone number, and also ask for the mobile number and the email address. Uh, are you sure about it? Yes, of course, uh, this is the way to go. So someone has a vision, and a decision was made. Let's do it from now on. New subscribers uh, will jot down the address, uh, the telephone line, and the mobile line, and the address, and the email address. This order was given to all subsidiaries of the bank. In uh, Valencia, it was very serious, because two years later, 75% of new clients lacked this uh, information jotted down. But the head of the office said, why should I bother you with this nonsense imposed upon us by the top of brass? Someone, sometimes the order is given, but someone decides that it's not necessary or that he has a different way to go about it, and this is so. My last factor is uh, how you are alive to innovations that uh, make you start it all over again and finding out your way into the future. What's your formal mechanism to be updated? How you get updated? Analyzing this is very important. As much as how tech you are, it's uh, two factors. The way you digitalize your processes and how much of your staff is uh, embracing it. I feel that these thoughts from other trades are interesting for our trade as well. They say that the Americans there in the USA, this uh, is uh, different in different sectors. You pick up different uh, arenas. Each one of them has a different way to go about it and different performance. They say that uh, drug makers have issues with people not so much with technology. They have issues with the board. They say that in insurances, People are OK, however, technology is poor. This is the American case. All Catalan companies are very good at the top of it. They make it, and they look into the future. But eventually, let me tell you that everyone performs differently. And in the same industry, in the same arena, every player has a different performance. Therefore, we may argue over where uh, Catalan education ranks in this matrix, if, we, if I put it myself up for that. Wherever the Catalan education trade is, each one of your schools is ranking differently on the matrix because the daily business of your schools is totally different from the next one because people are different, because backgrounds are different, because the family ecosystem and the relations maps are different. You are where you are, you do what you do, and um, digital transformation depends on arenas, uh, on sectors and industries. There are different performances, different ways to deliver on it. So let's learn from others, uh, from the way they organize their own DT. It boils down to leading change. Much has been written about it for life. This is a book made into Spanish as well. It's in English, however, on the screen. How to lead the change, a cutter by cutter. Let's Google for a summary of it. It's necessary to buy it. it everything was down to a single page in the book. He wrote that uh, it's necessary to meet uh, seven requirements to lead the change. A board coalition, the feeling of emergency, a clear idea where you are heading to, and the small successes, the small steps forward telling people that we are on the right track to make it. And eventually, common sense. Point Foch. Told, be modern, but read the classics. Eventually, it boils down to organizations. In an organization, there are those who do things uh, done as usually, and things that uh, go into new pathways. And we need both people. Let's uh, keep the business efficiently with quality in it. Let's explore new avenues, new opportunities. 
there is an issue with two souls I need to make progress. An organization only with explorers dies because uh, nothing consolidates there, nothing is steady. An organization uh, with uh, people who do things as usual dies because of obsolescence. obsolescence. Eventually, how can I match uh, expertise uh, with exploration, with discoveries, uh, with uh, risk taking, with venturing into new things? Eventually, how do I organize myself? Should I create a new system? Everyone worries about it, and no one has a way to fix it. But uh, we all are keen on it. Mind you, these topics are organization related. How can we go about it? To start with, I don't know. Tell you again that uh, everyone here performs differently. The general way applied to face uh, and DT processes at any industry outside this room in the hall of the MWC eventually boils down to three things, three requirements to be met. What's your vision, your, your strategy, your way to be alive to it, approach it? Second, what are you up to? What's your bi daily business? What's your process, your operations? How do you do things? Third, culture and team work. The environment, the atmosphere, the style, the skills, the way to go about it, it's always through three things, activity, business, uh, culture, team, business, whatever. It's always these three things together. For instance, if you open up this one eventually, it is processes, relations, how can I relate to parents, how to go about this or that, services delivered, what's the proposal? What's my offer? This applies to any business, and there is in any business a different way to go about it. You are a service deliverer, but uh, when you apply this, you may talk about which the uh, examination systems are, uh, whether we need uh, after school activities, whether we need to improve our PTA network. Everyone has his uh, her own way to go about it, to construct it. Everyone's uh, worrying about uh, the need to redesign, to remap things, to rethink things. And usually, and uh, we need to be holistic about it. When you want to approach a DT process, you have to think word about where you must go to, the way to go about it, and your team's skills, and the processes, the way you relate with the PTA, etc. If I just uh, work on one of these factors, it's totally mess. Let's uh, not only be techy about it. Of course, it's not the way. Let's open up our mind and let's be holistic about it. With a holistic mind applied to each school, you'll get a different outcome out of it. Eventually, you make a diagnosis where I am next, uh, what I'd like to have, and how we go for that. You know where you go to. It may take you three years or three months. It depends on how hard it is, uh, the resources, the budget, uh, whatever. The subsidies you get, uh, whether it is a supportive team you work with. Where I am, let's be holistic, vision and action plan. Eventually, you find out there are many things uh, for you to do. This is an off education a client, a map of things to be done by him, training in this, changing that tool, uh, policies for battery utilization of WhatsApp with PTA, uh, sessions for this or that. Uh, let's change my software in order for better classroom allocation. You may get uh, different things about it. You get a list and you arrange it somehow. The best way to do it usually is big outcomes with small efforts at the beginning. And uh, to complex it up, uh, to get nothing from it, uh, this is at the end of it. You arrange it, you get a working plan with the stages in it. It is a staged, a gradual, which is arranged on a time basis, but uh, always keeping the holistic approach to it. What you are up to is in a framework of many things to be done by you. Therefore, and uh, you have to account for why you do these things. 
people outside work like this, uh, but this is the way we should also do our thing. Everyone changes, everyone goes for the best way to manage it. The engine uh, for engine, the engine for change is not a technology, but culture. It boils down to how we do things and how we account for it. We need a holistic approach to the organization as a whole. We can't fix it if we just have a look at a specific sector in it. And there are not two equal cases, but everyone eventually does it the same way. So there are no two equal cases, but the method can be shared. The way to analyze, to dip into it, can be shared. We can learn from others, of course. We can learn from other sectors. I wish you could look at things that are educational, because eventually everyone tries to adjust to reality. And if the challenge is organizational, you must learn a lot from other trades. You need a plan for that with many small actions to be conducted. It will be long. We'll have to review it as we go because uh, plans only lie for six months. Hope you liked this presentation. Thank you.